Hey everyone, this is DW Berman here with another tutorial. I promise to eventually get back to doing graphics tutorials and experiments, but I do uh, want to do this little voiceover thing to just kind of show some friends uh, a way to edit voiceovers. You might notice that I'm in Adobe Audition and I have this area down here that's kind of purple and red and yellow. You get to this by this button up here. This is the uh, spectral, let me make sure I'm on it, spectral frequency display or shift D to turn it on and off. So normally you may just see this or you may see this more along those lines. What we want is we want to bring this up really nice and big so we can really see what's going on here. Now this shows us our audio, um, the frequency of our audio. We have down here on the bottom, this is our the low end of our audio. And up at the top, we have the high frequencies. And um, you'll notice if I zoom in, you can see some areas are bright yellow and that some are red and then purple and kind of like a deep blue, maybe. Uh, this uh, brightness value is uh, corresponds to the uh, intensity or the amplitude of it, I think. Not entirely sure, but functionally, that's kind of what it is. And you see like this little kind of sweeping up area. This is kind of like the pitch of my voice. Ploy and ploy. Ploy. So it's kind of ploy. So, okay. What I did when I started recording this one is I, I started recording. You hear some extra noise of my mouth just doing its thing and me breathing. So I, you know, I, you can hear the mouth smacking and then I swallow and then I breathe and then we have this area here where it's just kind of a constant noise I was I recorded this specifically I was quiet specifically just to get this little section here this is just room tone this is what it sounds like with the mic on and no sound coming in so I'm gonna copy that I just hit control C and I copied that section I had highlighted click up here and drag highlight copy it um, what this view down here is really good for is seeing the views or seeing the, the breaths that I take. You can see here where it's kind of like this overall pattern and it's kind of subtle. It's just kind of like this sweeps up and over and whatever. Uh, and then we have like these little spikes here. These little spikes here are generally mouth noise. They could also be a T or a B or a K sound but a lot of times it's like the smacking sound that you get with mouth noise. And then in the background was my dog. I am not in my recording space now. Uh, I'm next to a desktop computer with a loud fan and other stuff going on. So disregard the sound quality of the voice over here. Anyway, this is just kind of a sample thing I read for, for this purpose. You can hear there's just some mouth noise. If I highlight over this and I hit paste, you can see it shortens it and it just kind of fills it in so you can't tell there was anything there i'm going to undo that just because just because let me skip on down the line here and find a mark here here we go here's a a, a place where i kind of flubbed a little bit all you need is a computer with online access and a place for your employee to sit all you need is a computer with I just didn't like that take, I think. Uh, felt a little rushed. But the nice thing with having the spectral display on is I can see exactly where the breath ends. So I'm not going to get something where I'm cutting in the middle of a breath. Like, say, if I did this and I deleted, you'd hear this. Bob. You have that right in the middle of it. We don't want that. We want to go from the end of the breath to the beginning of the breath. All you need is a computer with online access. So let me just hit that. Job. All you need is a com Now you can't tell that the breath that was there went with the thing I just cut out. So that's pretty cool. But what if you want to remove the breath altogether? Well, that's why we, we copied that empty space before. Job. All you need is... Because we could just kind of come in here and turn that all the way down. And then we have just this... This hole here. Job. All you need. And that might sound a little odd. Hey, job. All you need is a. It's just dead. We don't want just dead. We want to replace that with some room tone. So there we go. Now we have some room tone in there. Day job. 
all you need is a comp sounds a bit more natural if we need to change the spacing on the gap we can just paste in again paste it in again and now we have a much bigger gap our workday job all you need and if we need to make it shorter we can just delete our workday job all you need is a comp so there we go that is cutting out a breath uh, and cutting out a take based on and being able to clearly see where the the breaths are Let's go back to this other marker here and we can whoops take a look at this Here we have some mouth noise going on Solution This is one where I would probably just take my uh, tool here and just kind of select from the beginning to the end and then just paste in that room tone solution SAP is and that's fine no problem there that's easy now um, if I were properly hydrated throughout the day I probably would not have all of the mouth noise and there are other ways to get rid of it but in this sometimes you have to edit it out depends on the, the needs of the project too how intense it is but you had no light duty job here's some extra noise in this section here but you had no light duty job and I can tell by just looking at the spectral display that I just have these vertical lines kind of running all the way up and down I had no light duty job and that could be my mouth like it sounds like a bunch of tic tacs rattling around against my teeth or maybe it's my dog shaking his collar outside the booth I had no light duty job. but we need to get rid of it so what we can do is we use this spot healing brush tool now there is a um, if we come into diagnostics there is a method for scanning for problems uh, let's uh, select the clicker we'll see if this does anything good so I selected an area hit scan I found some stuff let me repair all and it kind of took some of it away but you know had no light duty job. it's definitely better had no light duty job. but let's go back Oh, let me go forward. Okay, let me find that space again because it, I undid too far. Okay, so here we are. Good thing I set those markers. No light duty. So, and again, let's uh, click on the spot healing brush. I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Uh, another handy keyboard shortcut is the left bracket and right bracket key uh, enlarge and shrink the brush. This is just like in Photoshop. But what I want to do is I want to just take out these vertical lines that look out of place. Let me make the brush a little smaller too. This is a little tricky with a mouse. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to go all the way to the top and the bottom. I want to kind of just clean up this area a little bit. So I want the areas to look pretty uniform. Because if you do too much, you'll be able to hear it. Let's listen to that again. But you had no light, 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 but you had no light. Now let's go back to the history and we can listen to it beforehand. And let's see. But you had no light duty jobs. That, click, blah, blah, blah. that clicking in there. No light, no light, no light, no light, no light. Hopefully that's coming across on YouTube. If not, you can play with it on your own and see what it sounds like to you. No light duty. Sounds much better. No to me. light duty. I have some more over here. No light duty job. Now this area will probably be more difficult to handle, but it's still there. So let me kind of take it down. I guess we'll see. And I'll also try to demonstrate why you have to be careful of this, too. No light duty jobs available. Well, now you have... Let me increase the brush size here, and we'll just say... Have the safety and battery. If you want to get rid of that s sound. You can do that, but... Now you have the safety and battery. It just sounds pretty weird. Now you have the safety ambassador. So it's something where you want to try it and listen to it and make sure it doesn't sound too weird. But anyway, uh, the next step in what I would do to finish off this voiceover is I would kind of look around and see if there's any like parts of the audio that's sticking up much higher than the rest of it. 
uh, which case I think there was maybe one spot. I can look up at this top thing here and I say, okay, that one looks like it. This one little spot here is a little higher than the rest. And I'm just going to grab a few of those peaks and turn it down a little. Listen to it to make sure it doesn't sound too weird. Turn key. Turn key. Okay. Uh, let's zoom out. And what I can do now is I can go to the effects, normalize to negative 3 dB. And what normalize does is it expands. It turns up the volume on everything uh, to the point where the highest peak uh, is at negative 3 dB or negative 1 dB, depending on whatever you set the normalize to. Another option you have, in that case, this just raise the volume overall. Another thing that you might use would be compression, and that would be uh, amplitude and compression. In this one, it's multiband compressor. You could try the presets. Sometimes they're a little too harsh. Uh, you can also save your own presets by setting these things the way you want and then clicking this button here to save the setting as a preset. So I didn't really want to do that. But you notice everything got louder. Uh, it doesn't always happen that way. What compression does is it lowers the high parts and it raises the low parts to kind of give it a more even feel. Sometimes, depending on your settings, it can really make the breaths between sentences sound really loud, um, and it can change the shape of the audio. Oops. S you want to be careful using compression, and it's often recommended that beginners don't bother with it because it can mess up the sound. If your audio is going to a production company and they want to have control of the sound, you don't want to mess with the compression, probably. If it's going to an end user who just wants to put it into their thing and be done with it, then you may want to use a light compression to just kind of make it more production ready. It depends on your client and your needs. So that is basically the editing workflow that I use. Uh, cut stuff out of it and then clean up the, the breaths if you need to, clean up the clicks if you need to and hopefully uh, you don't have to do very much of that work. Um, again, make sure you record some room tone. You can be at the beginning or it can be at the end. And when you're done with it all, just you know, quit out of it. And then finally, normalize or do compression in order to bring the volumes up to where your client needs it to be if it's not there already. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it will help you uh, and make you quicker at audio editing. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like this video, and uh, I'll see you around. Thanks.